These videos are satiric reviews. You don't have to agree, but don't bitch about it. I hate this channel. Hey there, I'm Social Injustice Warrior Vinfuso, and I'm joined here today by Folks, what's the deal? I'm Mr. Jacobs from Brutal Honesty with Mr. Jacobs right here on YouTube with Undertaker versus Shane McMahon at WrestleMania 32. So without further ado, let's get down to it. We're here to review Vince McMahon's favorite creation versus Shane McMahon. This might be one of the most surprising matches in the streak. In just the simple sense that, wow, that... That actually happened, didn't it? Shane had been away from the company for a prolonged hiatus. Seven years without Shane O'Mac led to a lot of fans, myself included, thinking that we may never see the prodigal son return. But luckily, like most things, I was wrong. And everyone's favorite McMahon made a comeback. And it was great to see him return as a wrestling personality, but being that Shane was now approaching his 50s, there was little chance that we'd ever see him work a real match again. And again, I was wrong. Immediately upon his return, in telling his father that he wanted to take over Raw using a secret he had upon his father, but nobody ever discussed what that actually was, never came to fruition, <clears throat> in turn, Vince put his only begotten son against The Undertaker. In a match at WrestleMania, Taker's specialty pay-per-view, with the stipulation being a hell in a cell. The Undertaker's specialty stipulation. All of this felt less like WWE's repetitive booking at the time, and more like the combination of a fan fiction and a fever dream. Who would have thought that Shane McMahon would make his return to face The Undertaker to regain control of his role in WWE? Seriously, who, who would have thought of that? Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon is the answer to that. One of the things that a lot of fans were complaining about with this storyline at the time was the fact that it made Taker look like Vince's stooge, and it seemed really out of character for the dead man. And while their alliance did seem randomly thrown together, I won't deny that, there's a few things to take into account here. One of which being that behind the scenes, Taker's always been Vince's number one guy. And that's been well documented. But also, Taker has worked for Vince McMahon in kayfabe multiple times over. Are we forgetting the corporate ministry or the biker taker respect gimmick? It made sense to me. I mean, it could have used a little additional information and disclosing of such, but uh, you know, for the most part, it checks out. Let me start off by saying that seeing Shane McMahon, let alone an aged Shane McMahon, as a serious and credible threat to the former Lord of Darkness was a little challenging. It felt like a repeat of his rivalry with Kane a few years back, though I admittedly have a soft spot for that feud, truth be told. Shane McMahon is an absolute daredevil. The way a man who hasn't fully had wrestling training but has been wrestling unofficially for years would just go and throw himself off of everything and anything at, at ridiculous heights all to entertain an audience and uh, in kayfabe damage an opponent. It's insane. I can see how he could be a potential pain in the ass for your standard worker. That's plausible for me. I get that. I, I, I'm with you. But The Undertaker? Let alone Undertaker at WrestleMania? How? I, I mean, e even in the context of professional wrestling, that just... That just doesn't make sense. One thing about Shane McMahon is that he can take a hell of a beating. And he took a hell of a beating in this match. We begin with Shane McMahon making his way to the ring first. Uh, being accompanied with, by his kids. Um, but yeah, that's uh, top-notch parenting, Shane. Uh, uh, you know, inviting the kids to come... Watch your slaughter. Uh, yeah, father of the year material. And this is a very hit kick punch fest. Not that that necessarily makes it bad, it just, you know, makes it feel a bit repetitive. Like when you binge watch through my videos, you're just like, ah, oh, God, I I've seen this one already, haven't I? And you might have, but it had a different title. And it was about a different subject. The match does seem as if Shane is initially trying to attack the Phenom from afar as to not risk injury and try to exhaust the bigger, uh, more deader man. Um, you know, Shane and Undertaker kind of size, size each other up and kind of go around the ring, Shane kind of dodging and, you know, juking and jiving, you know what I'm saying, getting out of the way, trying to at least. 
The match really begins to take off with Taker hitting Shane with the snake eyes, followed by Shane retaliating with a beautiful spinning elbow. It was so nice they had to show it twice. Taker takes things to the outside, tossing Shane into the cage and then knocking him down. He tosses him back in the ring where he hits him with the last ride. And if wrestling were real, and if wrestling were real, not only would Taker win, but Shane would be dead. But it's not, so Shane kicks out and locks The Undertaker in a triangle choke. Of course. Shane goes after Taker, who choke slams him on steel steps only so that Shane could kick out at two. Because he's a McMahon, god damn it! Then when the stairs come into play, I mean, as somebody who has a bad back, I mean, that made me want to go see my chiropractor right there. He attempts an elbow drop on the steel steps, but Shane uses dodge. Shane sits on the steps, just chilling, relaxing, maxing out, acting all cool, until The Undertaker runs directly toward him and into a DDT. On the steel steps, nonetheless. It's an elbow drop, but the dead man sits right back up and locks in the Hell's Gates. Only for Shane to somehow reverse it into what looks like a figure four, and then a sharpshooter... And even after multiple watches, I still, I, I still have no idea how he did that. I, 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 I don't. But the dead man powers out of it, causing Shane to put a garbage can between he and the man without a pulse, causing the crowd to cheer simply from seeing Shane grab Oscar the Grouch's home. Being who he is, he goes to the top rope and hits the coast to coast. Shane then grabs a tool, of which I don't know the name of because I'm a millennial twat and I've never done a real man's work, and loosens the bolts to a portion of the cell. Why that was in there is anyone's guess, but of course being that this is wrestling and it was Shane who undid them, he of course has to be the one to go through that. Taker plows right through him through the cell, busting the two out. Um, <clears throat> not, not sexually. Not sexually. The fight is taken much closer to the crowd than any match I can recall in recent memory before The Undertaker calling for the end, attempting a tombstone with Chain sneaking around him and locking in a sleeper hold. Taker then retaliates by twisting himself around and landing on top of Shane through a table. Shane hits the dead man with a toolbox and begins climbing to the top of the cell, a structure which has easily tripled in size since the last time Shane was around to see one. I think he was praying. I'm not sure because he took some time to jump down, but I think he was praying. <laughs> and he dives off it with an elbow drop like the fucking maniac he is. All for Taker to move out of the way. This has now changed the match from the dead man versus the Undertaker. Keep in mind, keep in mind that Shane McMahon's kids are watching not even 10, 20 feet away, just watching what's going down. I mean, you gotta think about what's going on in those kids' heads, I mean, really. I mean, I know, I know that they've known that stuff was planned out, but it still can't be fun watching your dad go through that shit. And no, 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 guys, no, nope, stop, stop, stop. This should be the end of the match. This should be the end of that man's career. This should be the end of that man's life. There is no continue. Now keep in mind that Shane McMahon has already been choke slammed onto stairs, okay? Already been given the last ride, okay? been in the Hell's Gate, and now he's being tossed outside of the cage. Taker brings him back in the ring and hits him with a tombstone, beating the boss's kid on the grandest stage of them all. That's it, guys. Shane loses, so Vince gives him SmackDown instead of Raw. Gee, I wonder why people see it as the inferior show. This match was a lot better than it had any right being. There are moments in the match that genuinely look impressive and hold my interest, but I think the biggest thing this match gets wrong is that it was awarded maybe 10 minutes too much. The match would have been that much more impressive had they run through their highlight reel, as opposed to adding way too much filler in between their bigger and more impressive spots. Regardless, I think this match deserves a second viewing. It's definitely a lot better than I remember it being, and it's definitely a lot better than w whatever it was he did with Cena last year. A big shout out and a huge thank you to VM Fuso, the social injustice warrior, for letting me come on the on the video and you know let me chip in my two cents and add in to this review. Please like and subscribe and uh, you know tune into this channel, man. He has some pretty cool stuff on this channel. I personally love the content. I am subscribed to this channel and uh, I love everything he does. Um, also, if you have time to. You know, stop by my channel. I have some pretty awesome content too. Um, I give a brutally honest opinion about wrestling, movies, and video games. Mostly wrestling. I'm Mr. Jacobs, giving you nothing but brutal honesty. Peace.
Well, let me tell you something, brother. You're watching the Social Injustice Warrior V. Infuso's channel, dude. So if you like the words that came out of his mouth hole, and you too want to become a V-tard, don't forget to like and subscribe, and click that little bell icon to get updates and notifications. Ooh, tell him what up, Mach. Ooh, yeah. Follow the man on Twitter, yeah, because we all know it's not stalking if it's on the internet, yeah. Join the madness by joining the Discord, and if you have a moment of time and a free dollar to spare, head over to the SIJW's Patreon, dig it, where you can request videos, get exclusive videos, and early access to content, yeah. Or go down to PayPal, where you can buy the shirts, brother. But most importantly, just remember, if you're not tuning in, then you're, you're missing, missing out. out. I like to thank V and Fuso for letting me come on and uh, put my two cents in on the match.